This is LXBN TV, and I'm Colin O'Keefe. Late last week, Social Network and Mobile Application Path was hit with a $800,000 fine from the FTC, the largest ever for a mobile app. Joining me to discuss the story is Lindsay Tonsager, attorney in Covington and Burling's D.C. office and author on their blog, Inside Privacy. Lindsay, first, what violations did Path commit? Just taking a quick glance at the story, it sounds like there was a, a bit of a wide variety there. Yeah, and it's, it's actually a little bit of a trick question because really we don't know whether or not PATH actually violated the law. Uh, what happened was that PATH entered into a consent decree with the Federal Trade Commission in order to settle charges that the FTC brought in a complaint. And when a company settles with the FTC, they don't actually have to admit any legal wrongdoing or any legal liability. So we'll never know for sure whether a legal violation occurred here. That said, it's probably helpful to give a little bit more background about what the PATH application is and what the FTC charged in its complaint. So the PATH mobile application is a piece of software you can download for your mobile phone, and it's, it's a social networking app. So it's kind of like a digital version of the journal that you might have at home sitting next to your bed. You can write a little entry about what your day was like, you can upload photos, and then you can share that information with your friends and family who also use the PATH application. What the FTC charged in its complaint was that PATH potentially violated the law in two respects. First, the FTC argued that PATH collected personal information from children under the age of 13 without providing parents notice and obtaining parents' consent. So this uh, is, is governed by the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, or COPPA. And COPPA requires that any time a general audience online service obtains personal information from children that it actually knows are under 13, that they should be providing parents notice and be getting the parents' parental consent. Here, what happened, according to the FTC anyway, is that for about 3,000 different users, when the app was initially launched, those users provided date of birth information that corresponded with an age that was under the age of 13. The FTC argued that by getting that birth date information, PATH had actual knowledge that those particular users were under 13 and that PATH should have went ahead and gotten parental notice and, given, and obtained parental consent at that point. Instead, what the FTC said happened is that PATH allowed the user to enter other personal information, such as their full name, their email address, and potentially personal information in the different posts that it sent to different users through the PATH application. So that's why they claimed that there was a, a COPPA violation in this instance. The second charge that the FTC brought wasn't specific to children. The FTC said that for all of the different PATH users, PATH pro uh, failed to provide enough notice or maybe even potentially deceived consumers in the type of notice that it did give about how the application was collecting contact information from the user's mobile address book. So again, we don't know for sure whether PATH actually violated the law here, but those are the two charges that the FTC brought. I see. And of course, mobile applications are being a much bigger part of all Americans' day-to-day -day lives. So just how much of a, pro of a priority is mobile app privacy for the FTC right now? It seems like it's, it's rising up there and becoming a big issue. Yeah, I would say it's mobile privacy is definitely one of the top priorities for the Federal Trade Commission right now. Actually, on the very same day that the PATH settlement was announced, the Federal Trade Commission released mobile app privacy guidelines. Now, these guidelines aren't legally binding, they're not formal rules, but they do provide some recommendations or best practices for a very wide variety of different players in the mobile app ecosystem, including mobile app platforms, app developers, ad networks who are involved in the mobile space, and even trade associations that have mobile apps as their members. So I won't go through all of the different details here, but just to provide you a little bit of some context for what these recommendations included, for mobile app platforms, Forms, for example, they encourage the, the user to be provided notice and to be able to provide some type of consent before certain types of information were accessed on their mobile phones. And these were things that the FTC at least thinks are especially sensitive, like users' videos and photos that are stored locally on the phone. 
The FTC also encouraged these app uh, platforms to develop some different icons that would actually be displayed on the user's mobile app screen so that the user would know any time that someone was trying to access this kind of information from the user's device. Another example is the FTC encouraged platforms to develop something like a mobile dashboard where the user could see all of the different mobile apps that he or she had downloaded on their device and then kind of granularly go in and say, this app can, can access certain information, whereas this other app can access different sets of information. And then another point I wanted to highlight that I found particularly interesting is the FTC encouraged industry to develop a do not track system for mobile. And this would be parallel to industry's efforts outside of the mobile environment. You know, whenever you look at a website on your laptop or your personal computer, developing a do not track system for that kind of, uh, of environment. And what's interesting is in the non-mobile space, industry has found that there are tremendous challenges with developing this kind of do not track system and that it raises some really hard questions that still haven't been figured out. So it'll be interesting to see how the non-mobile do not track system informs the mobile uh, system development and, and how those two play together over time. And I know your question was really focused on the Federal Trade Commission, but I just want to close with highlighting that this isn't the only regulator that's really focused on mobile app privacy at this time. We also have federal and state regulators that are really interested in mobile privacy right now. So for example, the Department of Commerce through NTIA's multi-stakeholder process is itself trying to develop some best practices or a code of conduct that industry can follow with respect to mobile app privacy. At the state level, we have the California State Attorney General, Camilla Harris, publishing her own recommendations for how mobile apps should, should uh, protect users' privacy. And then at, at, in New Jersey, on the other side of the country, last June or July, we saw a COPPA action, actually, where the state attorney generals argued that a mobile app developer actually was collecting personal information from children under the age of 13, again, without providing parents notice and obtaining parental consent. So this is definitely an area to continue to watch. It's going to really stay hot over, over the next year or so. Absolutely. There's a number of different issues in there. I know Do Not Track has been big. The California attorney general has made this a priority of hers, going after, I think it was Delta's. Uh, or, or an airline's application. So it's an application or it's a priority across the country enforcing mobile app privacy. So it's going to be interesting to watch, not just at the federal level, but again, at, at all types of levels. Exactly. Once again, that was Lindsay Tonsager of Covington and Burling and Inside Privacy. For more of her commentary on this story and other mobile privacy issues, be sure to visit InsidePrivacy.com and for curated insight from the LexBlog Network's thousands of authors, along with more video interviews on LXBN TV visit us at lxpn.com. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you.